Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and today we're going to make some policy envelopes. We're going to take some scraps. You can use uh, digitals, whatever you have. I have just drug out some of my old scrapbook paper scraps, and this is what I'm going to use to make some with. I'm going to make some different sizes. Some will be long, some will be short, some will be narrow, some will be tall. I mean, it's just going to be in a variety of ways. And the reason... Sorry, I turned away from the microphone. The reason I have made this one, hopefully it's going to fit. I didn't measure. <laughs> it would have probably been good to measure first. Yes, it's going to fit. That one's going to go right there in the front of this little journal that we made. So that one's going to go right there, just like that. I like that color and everything with it. Plus, I have used last night when we did the video on these pocket pages we used that paper so we're gonna put that one inside there probably and then I'm just gonna make some more for different journals I'm gonna make a bunch of them up because I've got just a ton and I'll kind of pull some of these in I've got a ton of scrapbook scraps scrapbook paper scraps that I want to get used up so let's pull in Oh, well, let's do one out of this first. Now, like I said, if you have regular digitals and you don't have scrapbook paper, that is fine. Use what you have. It will work just as good. Let's see. I don't think I'm going to trim this off, this little piece here, because when I fold it up, this is what's going to show, and it doesn't have any writing on it, so I don't think I'm going to trim that off. Now, you can do your scoring. You can score these and put them together that way. I may score, I may not. On this one, I scored a little bit because that paper was so thick. I don't know if I'm going to score on this one or not. This paper is not quite as thick. All you want is this side right here and this side. You want one side to lap over the other one so that you can glue so you want it to and then if you want it real wide just back it off like that if you want it narrow then you can adjust there now this is a 12 inch long piece here so I'm gonna burnish and then it is let's see how wide it is it is almost 7 inches tall so it's 12 by 7, but this is just scrap, and I didn't want to cut it off. I wanted to use the whole thing. So that's going to be how wide our pocket is right there. And that's all, well, that is as wide as that one is. It's strange, but that's the way I do things sometimes. Now, on this bottom, I will probably use my um, score tool and my scoring board and score this, because I'm going to score through both thicknesses of paper. And all I want is just about a half an inch to fold up to this little part right here on the bottom. So I'm going to squirt about right there. And that's going to take all of that little barcode in. And we'll cut this part off so that's not going to be seen. Now on this end, this is going to be your flap that's going to fold over. So I made mine on this. Let's see. This one, I made it about uh, one and five eighths, looks like. But you don't, it doesn't have to be a particular height. Just make it, let's see, there's one and a half. Let's do one and three quarters, maybe. I think that will be plenty tall enough. And I'm just scoring pretty hard so I can score through everything. Okay, I've got my score lines in here. Now, we do not need, we don't need this part, that part, or these little pieces here. So we're going to trim those off. Now, me seeing these score lines on this is a lot tougher than probably you, but I'm just going to trim right at the top of the score line. And then when I get to the score line that goes this way, I'm just going to do a little angle cut there. This side I'm going to angle cut in and then go up past my little score line and just trim that off. 
that's going to take that part off. And then this little part right here is going to fold up just like that. And I kind of like that at the bottom. That looks good. So that's what we're going to do with that. And then on the top, you're going to do basically the same thing. Now, I'm going to do kind of a little angle cut. Right here's my score line going across, but I'm going to kind of angle cut it up there. Just like that till I get to that score line. And then I'm just going to go kind of straight up. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to flip this over and put it on this side so that I can kind of get that same angle and do it that way. That way my angles are close to the same and I don't have to, you know, keep cutting or put it back together and cut it again or trim it a little bit more. I can kind of get them right the first time, hopefully. Yep, they come together pretty good. Now, mine are coming together at a little bit of an off angle, but if I put them together like that, they come together just right. And see, so you want, you really want this to scoop down a little bit. So you can always put it together like this if you want to. And then do a little trimming. Let me get it even down here. Because you do want that down at a little bit of a scoop because that way it's easier to get all of your papers and things in there. Now let's see if that looks better. Well, I actually went a little bit up. Why did I do that? Okay, let me do that again. I said that if you did that, you wouldn't have to do all this trimming, didn't I? Well, you know. I mean, it's trial and error the first few times. I did the first one perfect the first time I cut it. But sometimes my cutter don't doesn't cut right. Okay, that'll work right there. Now, if you want these to both be even, you can trim that one off a little bit more. That's not a big deal to me. When I fold it that way, they look pretty even to me. Now, for this top part, you want your little flap to be at a little bit of an angle coming in, like that. So instead of trimming this one and then trying to figure out how to trim the other one to make it match, I just put both of them together. Don't crease it. Just put them together like that. Start down here at your little score line and then just cut up at a little bit of an angle like that. Give it a little angle cut. And then let's see what that looks like. Fold that over. Yeah, that looks good to me right there. See how that comes over? And if you have a little piece right here like I do, I have a little tiny piece that's not wanting to fold right. I just trim that off. It's not a biggie. Just trim it off. When I say that like that, I think about Andy Griffith. Who watches that show? My husband and I still watch it. I, even though it's old as the hills, we still love it. And we, we know all of them by heart, but we get so tickled at some of the sayings on there. And I love the one where Andy is telling Aunt B their freezer has torn up. And he's telling Aunt B, just call the man, Aunt B. Just call the man. <laughs> I love that one. So when I say that, just cut it off. It reminds me of that. Just cut it off. Just call the man, people. Just do it. Don't be afraid to cut. It's just paper. Just paper. Now, I'm inking around mine. That's not something you have to do. If you want to leave yours just regular, you can. I'm not going to ink here because I don't want that to stand out. That little piece right there. And I'm not going to ink here because I don't want that to stand out on the top. All right. Now we're going to take our glue. And I'm going to put a little glue under here. All the way up to that area right there. Oops, I came too far, didn't I? Okay, that's what our little towel is for. To wipe that off. Okay. So there we go. We've got that on there. We got a little extra glue right there. We'll take that off. 
and then down here you're just going to fold this piece up I know most of you have probably made these and I have made them before on camera but I thought you know we've got a lot of new people and a lot of new people that have just started in things like this so I thought well this will be a good time to show everybody how to do these little envelopes especially since I want some to put in my little journal and to put in my stash okay all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to measure and get the center of this. So we're going to take our Tim Holtz ruler, put the zero up here, and then just look at both ends until you get the measurement on both ends the same, which is right there. So see, this is like 2 and 5 eighths, and that one says 2 and 5 eighths. And then I'm just going to slide it down. And hopefully I didn't move it any. I don't think I did. I can always measure down here too. There's two and three quarters and two and three quarters. Okay, I want my little piece right there and we're going to put a little circle on there. And then we're going to come on down here, two and three quarters, two and three quarters. And let's see, about right there. You want to give it enough room between here to put your little circle. Now I have the one inch punch. I would like to have the three quarter inch punch, but I don't have one of those. I know we probably sell it, but Melina has threatened my life if I get the last one that we have in stock. So, <laughs> so I will have to wait till more come in before I can get the three quarter inch punch. But I'm just going to use my one inch. It'll be fine. And I'm just using a scrap piece of cardstock. It's just a light tan brown. Now you can use whatever color for your little buttons, as we will call it, that you want. I'm going to use these because I'm going to darken them up. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Let me find my little scrap piece under here. All right, I've just got a little scrap piece of file folder. And we're going to just take our ink dauber and I'm going to put lots of ink on that and darken it up. So if you don't have the right color cardstock, just make your color. If you if I wanted this green, I would just grab my green ink and dye it green. And I'm just going to dye one of them because the other one's going to be on the back, so I don't need it dyed. But I'd rather just have a brown one on here, but you know, you can put whatever color you want. Now, I'm just going to take two of these. I'm going to take the one that I didn't put ink on. And I'm going to put my glue on there. I hold it in my fingers like that. You can see it's tied up against four of my fingers. Or three fingers and one thumb. Then I take this one and I just sit it down in there. And I know that it's perfectly even. Because all of my fingers are holding it there. Then you want to just go around the edge of this to cover up any of that white, or tan, I should say. Okay, and then we're going to do this one the same way. Hold it like that, and then just lay that other one in there on the top. Press it together, and don't let it slide, and you're good. Okay, now we're going to put a little circle with our pencil and I'm gonna have to pull it back here so I can kind of get over it and look and that looks about like the center I can never get it exactly but that's close enough okay now we're gonna take our hole punch and I'm gonna use the small side of my hole punch and I'm gonna look for that little dot and punch that and then clean this out look for our little dot and punch that one okay now we're going to put some brads in here and most of my brads have disappeared over the time um, I've got a big box of them somewhere and 
when everything got moved they got moved and so now I can't find the big box so I know it's in storage somewhere I'm just gonna have to one day just get out there and dig until I can find it okay we've got a choice I can put that green on there which I don't really care for um, let's see if I have another gold in here anywhere I may not have Okay, I didn't find another gold, but I did find something that's cute and maybe it will work. I've got these little guys, and hopefully they're the same color. Well, they're a little bit different color, but not much. And they're just a pale, pale green, so I'm going to use those. I have got to find my other brads. It drives me crazy. Okay, now I need to punch my holes in this. Now, you can punch the holes in this a couple of different ways. On this top part, I can punch it with this. No problem. But, on this down here, it will not reach. My crocodile won't reach. So I'm going to put my little piece of foam in there. And then I'm going to get my little awl. And I'm just going to punch the hole through like that. This will keep it from going all the way through your paper. So let's go ahead and let's just put the one in the bottom first. And I just put my finger in under there and just hold it. And then I just use my nails hopefully to open that up. Yeah, there we go. Like that. See, that's a little bit off the center, but I don't care. It'll work. Then we're going to put this one in the top. And again, I'm going to put it through and just open it up. Now you can cover the back of these if you want with something. I've tried to flatten those out to the point where I don't think anything will be hindered. But if you wanna put something over the backs of these, you can just put, cut a little piece of paper and put it over there if you want. Now these reds were a little bit small for this hole that I punched in here so they're going to slide just a tiny bit but again that doesn't bother me. Now I'm going to use some of this string to put on here because it's green and I think it'll look good with this. So all we're going to do is tie it around this top one a couple of times. Just give it a good good knot in there. Okay. See how it's, that's sliding around on that little bread, but I think it'll stop once we get everything together. Okay, put that back up there. Now, this little end we can cut off. We don't need that. So I just kind of go up under there and trim that one off. And then you can just wrap this around just like a policy envelope. And there you go. You've got that all closed up. Isn't that cute? Now, I think these would have been cute if I'd have done them in black, too. That would have been cute. We might do another one that way if we've got more of that paper. I'm not sure I do. But I think that's cute. And they work great. All right, let's try to do a tall one. I want to do a tall one. And look what I have. I have... This piece of paper, I have no idea where it came from. No idea who sent it to me. I don't think it's, I mean, it's not mine. I don't remember buying it. But we're going to use this whole 12 by 12 sheet on this because I love these butterflies. <laughs> so, let's see. Now, if I fold it there and then if I fold it there, I want to see how tall this will be. I might have to trim it off some. We don't want to make it more than um, be about eight. Yeah, I can fit it in my tall journal, so that's okay. We're going to leave it. So I'm going to fold like this just to see how much I need to fold that over and that one over. Just bring the ends together. And I just, this, these are just so pretty, these butterflies. I'd love to just sit and cut them all out, but I want to use the paper, so. And I have no clue. This doesn't have any kind of name on it, so I have no clue what paper collection this is out of. 
I know a lot of people are going to ask, but I don't have a clue. Okay, take your bone folder and press those folds down really well. Then we're going to use our scoreboard again. This is going to help us fold the top part and the bottom part. Okay. Now the bottom, I'm going to fold up about an inch. That, um, I may fold an inch. No, I'm going to fold an inch. That will give us plenty of room to fold that up and it hold well. Whoops. It's jumping. There we go. I have to press a little harder. Okay. And then the top for our, hmm, let's see. Let me pull this up and look at it. See what we have here. So if I go three. Yeah, okay, let's score it at three. And that should give us a nice flap at the top. Okay. Now let's do some trimming. See, even in the inside of this is pretty. It's very, very pretty. Where are my other scissors? So this is going to be a nice large one. Remember, cut until you get to that score line that goes this way, and then just do it. Cut it at an angle. It just helps everything fold up better. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Now, when you fold this. When you lay these over and you fold this up, you don't want any resistance here. So if you have a piece like this that's a little bit long, just trim it off some. You don't want it to hinder your bottom fold there. Okay, see they're, they're away from my fold so they're not going to hinder anything. Fold up good. Just don't cut too sharp of an angle here. On this one I really cut a little bit too sharp, but it, I mean it's still it's fine, but don't cut too sharp. Just cut a little bit of an angle. See? Okay. Now let's cut this up here off. And I think I'm going to try to put these pieces together. I know I'm twisting this around and around, but this paper is kind of thick. Okay. Let's put it together like that. Just kind of making sure I've got it where it needs to be. And I'm going to go up in an angle till I get to that score line. And then we're going to cut up. And I'm going to go ahead and do my little curve all at one time, hopefully. And I may have to do a little bit of fixing, but that's okay. I think that'll work. And I get, I get to save these pieces. Okay. Ooh, that comes just perfect there. Look at that. And then this folds down like that. That's kind of a tall flap, so I think I want it cut off some more. I don't really want my flap to be that big. So what we're going to do is put it back together. I'm just going to come across here and then just angle down. Okay, so I took about three quarters of an inch off and I think that will be better. Let's look at it. Yeah, that's much better, much, much better. Okay, I can see right here on this side, I need to trim off just a tiny bit. Okay, I think that is just right. I love it. I love that one. And even though the butterflies look upside down, these are, but these up here aren't, and my paper's the right way up, so we're going to leave it like that. Now, I'm going to ink around this one a little bit, because I did leave a few little white pieces showing. Well, they're really cream colored, but you're not going to see a lot of the ink, because this does have that gold foiling in it, but it'll just cover up any of that inside paper that I might have left showing. Okay. 
Now, I would love to have a piece of gold, two, a couple of pieces of gold paper to do my little buttons with, but I don't think I have anything gold right here, and I really don't want to get up and go look. Isn't that lazy? I really don't want to. So I'm just going to use a piece of this file folder, and I'm just going to ink it up pretty dark. And I need to get something else to lay that on. You don't need to lay it on my paper there. Okay. I think that would look good. It's got some little speckles in it, so I like that. Now let's go ahead and punch out our circles. And I just colored them all. It doesn't matter. You don't have to, but I just colored all of them. For the time being. Now you can whoops put your glue on this one. Ooh, I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> I'm hot. I'm gonna have to go turn the air down. It's really hot and muggy here today anyway and I just whew, I'm just burning up. Okay let's see I think I'm gonna put this one with lots of speckles on top of it on the top there. All right, so there's our two pieces. Yeah, I think that's gonna look okay. Now I'm going to glue this together. this bottom part up. Alright, then we can measure this and put our little opening here. Whoops! I'm dropping everything over here. Knocking things around. Okay. Um, there's my Right there would be my center. And I think I'm going to put it about right there. And then for this one, we'll bring it down. Bring it a little bit further down. About right there. That'll work. And then let's see if we can mark the center of these. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay. I want a gold brad, but I don't think I'm going to find but one. Let's look and see. Okay, I'm not going to find another gold one. So what we're going to do is go with this green right here. It's got some of the same green that's in here, so it will work. It's going to be a little bright, but it'll work. Now, I'm going to use this, my little crocodile. We do, I think, have these in stock. I'm pretty sure we do. And they're now teal handle. So you know I'm probably going to have to get another one. Um, this one is many, many, many years old. I'm talking mini. <laughs> it's like probably almost 10. It, I got it when they first came out with them. And they were twice as expensive as they are now. Which was crazy, but I thought I just had to have it. Which it, it has come in handy. I have used it tons. It's not something, it's not one of those tools that you buy and use very seldom. I, I use it just about every day. Okay. That looks pretty good. I don't mind that. Now let's put our hole down there. And I'm going to slide our little piece of foam down in there. Maybe not too far. Okay. Then we're going to take our little awl and punch a hole in there. Wow, that's some tough, tough stuff. Okay, put our little button on there. 
Okay, you're gonna go through. I'm gonna force you. Well, it may not. I don't think I opened my hole up enough. Now, let's try it. Oh yes, that's much better. It works great when you open the hole up like it needs to be. Let's see. I just have to kind of feel to open that up. There we go. So there is that one. Cute. I like that. And I think I'm going to use this green string on this one as well. I kind of like that. I kind of, sort of like it. These are really, really good to put in your journals to store a lot of things that maybe you're going to use later if you're on vacation or on a trip or something and you don't have time right that minute to use your little knickknacks that you're going to put in your journal but you want to keep them. You can store them in one of these and they're fantastic. Okay, I think that's enough that off you can also put little charms on the end of these if you want I usually just leave mine but you can do that isn't that cute you can also doll these up if you want to you can put ribbon up here ribbon down here you can do a lot of different things with them now this one will go well I think in here because this is a bigger journal it's taller so that would go in here, but I wouldn't put it on a page like that. I would put it in the back, just like that. And this is our um, Kathy Holden journal that we did. So I would put it in there just like that. And see, that matches up with all of this. Now, to glue this down, all I would do, this is material, so I would use my Fabri-Tac glue down through here across here and up as a matter of fact let's just do it because this one's going to go in this journal so why not do it why not i can still take a picture of it for you guys just in the journal okay i'm just going to glue on two sides and the bottom the reason being you can still use the back side of this to slide something into maybe some tall tags or some tall ephemera that you're going to use, memorabilia you're going to use in your journal later on. You can do that. So we're going to glue it down just like that. Oops. Don't slide, don't slide. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of rub my hands over it until that catches. So we've got that, and then behind there, you've got a tall pocket that goes all the way down. And then you've got room in here to put all kinds of memorabilia. And I wanted one big in here because this is going to be the kids' singing journal when they go on their ministry trips and things. So I wanted to have some pockets and things in here that I can store some, th you know, like their, they get the little pamphlets and things and uh, all of that that has their name and stuff on it. So I wanted little places to store that until I got back so that I could do their pictures and put all kinds of things on here. This one I did with a um, magnet. And I will link this video for this journal below. I think there's a couple of videos. This is my journal that I'm going to use for the kids' ministry trips. Love it. I love it. Love it. Okay, that's there. Isn't that cute? I like it. And it, that green goes with this green perfectly. Okay, now you say, well, maybe I don't have those great big scraps that you have. Or you might want to make it with book pages. Make some of these with book pages. You can make these with anything that you have. It doesn't have to be big pieces of paper. You can make it with a piece of paper like this. This is uh, nine and a half. And it is... Uh, five and a half or five and three quarters so you can make it one of these let's see let me see if I have another piece under here that's even smaller that we could use I know I've drug out some yeah like this one this is a single sided it, it can be single sided because because the inside's not going to show so 
this is going to be kind of a small one, but we're going to fold it like that. This paper is gorgeous. I love it. I want, Christopher, if you're watching, I want a big paper pad made out of this. A big one. <laughs> a 12 by 12. This came from Brutus Monroe. Um, it was in our, I think, June kit. Okay, there's that. Now we're going to score the bottom. And let's see if I got my little, yeah, I got my little scoreboard here. And if you don't have a scoreboard, just use your ruler and score it with your ruler. You know, lay your ruler. Let's see. Let me grab a ruler. Everything is under everything. Why is that? Grab your ruler and put it down where you want to score and then just score it alongside your ruler. Or take a butter knife from the kitchen and use it to score with. You don't have to have a scoreboard. All of these things that I have got, I've collected over the years. This is not something that, that I just you know, bought all together. I have been in this for 20 years, so this is 20 years worth of stuff. There we go. And I've taught a lot of classes over the years, so when you teach classes, you have to have a lot of different things, a big variety. So a lot of this is from classes and things like that. I'm hoping one of these years, before I get too old to do it, that we can start our classes back up. All this, you know what mess will go away. We're not supposed to say that word on here, so I have to say, you know what mess. Might scare people, it says. So, cut that. Now, there's that part cut. And then, I'm just going to trim this, and I think I'll fold it together, or not fold it, but put it together like this, like I did that other one. Worked pretty good. And I'm just going to use my little scissors, come up to that fold, and then right now I'm just going to go straight up, or partially straight up. And then I will just take my scissors and round that part off like that. Hopefully you've seen all of that. I, sometimes I pull it toward me and I forget that I'm, I may be pulling it too far. So there's that. Now I always take your bone folder and this is a Teflon bone folder. We do have more of these coming. Teflon bone folder is a little bit expensive but you will never regret getting one. They make the crispest crispest I don't think that's a word. Crispus? They make very crisp creases. And they do not, like if you're scoring on a black paper, they don't make any lines or anything on your black paper. See, look, that almost stays up just by scoring it. Now watch, I'm just going to do it with my finger. See how that pops up? Now, if you take this bone folder, the end, go across that a couple of times. See, it lays down. They're amazing, I'm telling you. For years and years, I didn't have one because we couldn't find them anywhere. And I just, I don't know, I, I refused to pay the price. And then I borrowed one from a girl at a retreat that I went to. And oh my goodness, after I borrowed that and used it, I said, okay, we've got to find these to keep them in the shop because these things are awesome. So now I've got one and I've got a backup because I don't, if this one, something happens to this one, I don't want to be without. But these are, you can't break these things either. I think you could run over them with a tractor trailer truck and they wouldn't break. They're very, very strong. Okay. Piece that up. And I'm not, I'm not trying to promote. I'm just telling you guys. A lot of people are new and I just want them to know what I'm using. But if you want to buy, you can. If you don't want to buy, that's up to you. All I'm promoting right now is these little pockets. Love that. This one is cute. Very cute. Look at that. I love it. Okay. What are we going to close this one with? We can just put 
a bread in here and use the string around. We don't have to put one of those little circles will be way too big for this one. So let's, or we could put an eyelet in. What do we want to do? Do we want to put an eyelet in? No, you know what I think I'll do? I have these little flowers and they're kind of that color. I think I'll put a couple of those on there. If I can find another one that's that size. We're going to put a couple of little flower breads in here. Now I'm going to use just my awl to punch this hole because I don't want a big hole. I just want a small little hole to put this in. I don't want it sliding around. So I just punched a small hole. and Let's see if we can get that through. Yes. Is that somewhere near straight? I think so. And we'll straighten, flatten those out. So there is that one in there. And then let's see where we need this one. About right there. Now I can't get this little piece down in there. So what I will do is I'll take this and fold it a couple of times, stick it down in there, and use that as kind of a buffer to make sure that hopefully I don't go all the way through. So we got that in there. Let's put this one in. And see if I can open it up and this get my big fingers down in there. Yes. There we go. Okay. Now, we're going to use some of that same string. <laughs> we're going to use some of the same green string, I think. This works great, so why change, huh? And then, let's see if we can tie it around this. I did get that bread a little bit tight, but once we get it under there, we'll be fine. Who gets breads and eyelets mixed up? I know what, what each of them is, but when I start calling the name of them, sometimes I'll say, that's an eyelet, and then I'll say, no, that's a bread. That's an eyelet, that's a bread. I do, okay. Got that tied twice. I'm gonna trim that little piece off. And then we'll bring this down and just tighten it up like that. That's cute. Oh, I love that. Okay. I'm gonna cut some of the excess off of that. Look at that, how cute. I love it. Love it, love it. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of ink around. And there is another one. And that's just a tiny little policy envelope. Isn't that cute? And that would go, let's just see right here. Let's just say we had a page in here that didn't have <laughs> pockets on it. That would go on a page like that. Just glue it down. Then you, you've got your closure so nothing's going to fall out. Isn't that cute? Okay, you guys want to try making one out of a book page? Let's just see what happens. Why not? Now, this is a very fragile book page. I probably wouldn't make too many out of this because it's kind of fragile and it probably will crack over time. But we'll just put one together. Now, I'm going to run mine this way. I don't care that the writing is sideways. That doesn't bother me. If I ran it the other way, it would be very, very narrow. So we're just going to run it like this. And we're going to fold this little bottom part up like that. And then we'll fold this over like that. Now, I'm going to trim this little rough edge off of this. You could leave it if you'd rather have it there. It doesn't matter. Just going to trim it off. And we'll trim these. And I'm just going to lay them together like this. And give them a trim. So we'll put it together. How we put it? Let's do this side up. Put it together like that. Now I probably would not put a brad in this because this paper is so fragile. 
Oops, I didn't cut far enough back on that. Why didn't you tell me before I glued it? I don't know what I was doing there. That must I must have dozed off a little bit. Okay, let's try that again. And I wouldn't put a bread in this because this is an old book page that's very fragile. So I would not punch holes in this to put a bread. I don't think it would, it wouldn't stay. It would break. The paper would just break and tear. And use our bun folder. Put a nice crease in that. And it'll stay down just like that. We won't have to have a bread or eyelid or anything like that in it. So there is a nice little book page one. And we can put something right here to kind of decorate that up a little bit since it is a book page. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And we'll put maybe a word or something over here. A label, I guess. Okay, I think that's cute. I'd like to have something right across here, though. But I don't know what. Let's see. What, what do I have here? I know that's a book page on a book page, but I kind of like that. And this is just a piece that I sprayed with some ink. And we're going to glue that down. I like how it looks. And it's just laying there in my little pile of stuff. So we're going to put it down. Cute. I like it. Okay. So there is another Okay, this is a scrap piece of fall paper that I have had in my stash for a while. And this is very long. I have no idea where this come from. This is not a, it's not off of a 12 inch, but we're going to use it because I think it'll make a pretty pocket. Okay, let's see if that works about like that. Yes. And go ahead and just fold it with my hands first and you might choose to use the other side I want this side because I don't know what journal I want to put it in so we're going to use this side of it yeah that works now I am going to have to get my scoreboard and score this because this is a very thick paper and I'm just going to score at half an inch on the bottom. Whoops. I think I am. I think I am. There we go. have to press hard. Press hard. There. And then on the top, I think I'll score at two. And this is folded in the middle, so I've actually got a fold line down through there, but that's not going to hurt. And then just cut up at a little bit of an angle. Not much, just a little. And I may have gone a little bit too far. Let's see. You just don't want to cut more than what this little bottom piece is going to cover. Now, I didn't cut too far. It'll be good. But I am going to have to trim this little piece because it's not wanting to fold up. There we go. And a little piece right here. And then, again, just start below score line come up and then I'm just gonna go around at a little bit of a curve there and that is what you have right there isn't that cute okay I'm gonna trim this down a little bit more I've got a little bit of a piece right there and I'll show you what I'm talking about see how it's a little piece there that looks like it's trying to fold up so we're just gonna trim that off that's just where my fold is coming a little bit lower than where I trimmed. So we're just going to trim it off and then we'll fold it over. Now, that looks better. Now, if you don't have brads and you don't want to use brads, you can also use buttons. So, let's grab a button or two. We'll put this one down with buttons, maybe. If I can find two that are similar. They don't have to be just alike, but I'd like for them to be close. Let's use those two. They're close. 
down this way. We'll find it again. And I think I'm going to put my button right there, maybe. Okay. Now, this is where you need a needle and thread. Okay, let me see if this needle is going to go through this button first. Yes, it will go through. This is a large eye needle, and it, it's not really sharp, sharp, but it has a little bit of a sharp point. Enough that I think we can sew it in there, hopefully. If we can't, we'll punch a hole. Punch a hole. All right, let's see. What do we want to sew it on with? And this is just some hemp twine. And again, this I think this probably came in one of the kits a while ago. Now, let's see if we're going to be able to... I may have to pre-punch my holes if I do. That's okay. No? It came through there. Now, whether it goes back through or not, we won't, we won't know for a while. I'm just going to poke a hole through there, and I'm going to put my button on. And then there we go. And if you need a little help holding your button on, you can put a little glue under it, just a tiny bit. You just don't want to glue it down flush because you don't you won't have anything to put your string through. Okay. Let's see if I can get it back up through this hole over here. And then down through this one. Okay. And I think maybe well we'll put one more strand through there. That'll just make sure that it holds well. And see once I've already got my holes in there it's not a problem stitching it on. Okay now to make sure that our thread doesn't come loose on bottom we're just going to run it back through underneath the stitches and then just put it through your loop and tighten that down like that. And then I go ahead and put a little bit of glue on there. And I'll trim that knot off a little bit more when everything dries. So we can trim that right there. Now this one may prove to be a little bit more difficult because I have, it's on down here and I don't really have a good way to get my hand in there, but we're gonna see if we can do it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and pre-poke my hole from the top side. There we go. Don't give up. It'll, it'll get there. <laughs> and you can say, I stitched buttons onto, well, look at that. I pulled my knot straight through. I stitched buttons onto paper. I'm going to hold that kind of, sort of, in place. Now I'm going through two different thicknesses of paper right here, so that's why it's a little bit harder, but got it. Now let's go ahead and poke another hole, and I'm, gonna, I'm just looking to see where I need to poke a hole here. Right there looks like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take my little pokey tool, and I'm going to put a hole right there. And then a hole over here. That will help me. Because this, I don't want to tear my paper. And if I keep pushing on it, I might. So I don't want to tear it. Okay, there we go. And then just tighten that up. Go back through over here. There we go. That works great. And then I'm going to go one more time. At least one more loop just to make sure that everything holds nice and tight. And right up through, let's come up through this one. There we go. And back down through that one. And there we go. Now, tightening, I mean, no. Um, Tying this one off down in there can prove to be a little bit hard, but I'm just going to try to run my thread back under those stitches, or my needle, 
and then I'm looking down in there. Good thing that this is nice and full. So I can get my big hand down in there. Okay. There we go. And then on this one, I'm just going to leave the string a little bit long and I'm not going to put any glue down in there because if I do, it'll glue my pocket together. So there is our little button sewed on. They're not exactly perfectly straight, but they'll, they'll do. Now we're going to use, what are we going to use to tie that together? Let's just use another, now let's use some brown um, thread to tie it together. This is a nice brown thread that I think will go with this good. Then wrap it around. See, once you get everything kind of wrapped, you're not gonna not gonna know that it's a little. My buttons are a little bit off. There we go. Okay, that is that one. And I think that's cute. Like I said, other than my buttons being a little bit sideways, they go that way just a little bit, but that's okay. All right. Okay, guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me pull all these back out, and we'll show you everything that we did. Put that thread up. Okay, there is that one. The baby one. There's that one. There's the book page one. And I think it's, oh, no, we did the one that went in our big journal. We did this big one. So there are all of our little policy envelopes. Very quick and easy to make, and you can make them any size that you want. All right, we will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Remember, next week is when we draw for the $100 Amazon gift card, and you have to be a subscriber to be able to win. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.